Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we'll look at how we can generate SSH key pair and use it to log into a Linux machine. In this case, I'm going to be logging into a Kali Linux machine. Now, the key pair is going to consist of a public key and a private key. The private key is going to remain on our Windows PC machine where we'll generate the keys and then we'll export the public key to the Kali Linux machine. Now, let me show you what the public key looks like on the Kali Linux machine, there is this directory right here. This is what needs to be created. That's where we'll put the public key. So if I cd to this directory, you'll see that this, this is the key right here. This is the public key. If I do car, this is what the public key looks like. Now, I'm going to delete this uh, directory, and then we'll see how it's created, what command we need to use to create it. Let me go back to the... Okay, so I'm gonna need to delete this. Okay. Now it no longer exists. Do and it's no longer there. Now let's see the command to create the keys, and then to export the public key. I'm gonna be using PowerShell on the Windows PC. This is PowerShell. Now the command I'm going to be running is to generate the keys. SSH hyphen keygen type of key is going to be RSA. And then the size 1496. Now we'll put a comment here in a, a example. Com. Need call we need quotation marks here and then it's telling us that it's generating a public slash private rsa key pair and then it tells you enter the file in which to save the key so i'm gonna use a name test dot uh, test underscore ssh keys i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put a, a pass phrase or password i'm just gonna press enter enter so now it's telling me that your identity has been saved in this file and then this is the private key and this is the public key your public key has been saved in this one so there's two two keys this is the fingerprint now that we have the keys we need to export the key to kali linux so we need the IP address of Kali Linux in order for us to run the command that will export the key and create that .ssh directory for us. Now the command is going to be, before we run the command, let's pull the IP. So I already ran IP address to see the IP, which, which is 172.16.1.101. Now I'm going to go ahead and run the command. So it's a long command. Uh, let me clear this. And the command is cut. SSH. Now here you have to put the public key that we just created. So which is car. The keys are in the same directory as the one we are working with. You can open File Explorer to verify that. Uh, this is the key right here. Test SSH keys. Test SSH keys .pub. So these are the two keys. I'm going to be exporting this one. So car test. Let's go SSH keys go up. And then SSH, we're going to pipe that to SSH. Now, this is a command for remotely connecting to a Kali Linux machine or Linux machine or Linux server. And that's the username Kali IP 172. IP is 172.16.1.101. Now we'll run this command, make directory. So we'll create a directory using this command path. And so that's the home directory. We'll create this. So we'll create a directory called .ssh and cut. Inside the directory, we'll put let's do the keys. 
Okay. And call those keys authorized. Let's call keys. Uh, let's go to the beginning here. Make sure we're not missing the cut command. Should be cut. Double check and make sure that this is the right keys, the public keys, and you have your SSH command, and you're going to be making this directory right here. So once all this is correct, you press enter here. And it says connection refused. It didn't find the uh, test ssh.keys.pub. So let me double check this file name again and then retry. Okay, let's compare the names here. Test underscore ssh underscore. I have a dot instead of underscore. So let me change that to underscore here. So there's a typo there. So do the up arrow and I'll fix the typo. It should be underscore here. I'll press enter and try again and see if this is going to work. So it says connection to host 172.16.1.100 port 22 connection refused. I'm guessing SSH is not running. Let's uh, check SSH here. Should we go here? Clear. System. TS status SSH. So yeah, SSH is inactive. Uh, let's start SSH. Uh, SSH Kali clear. Let's check the status again. So it's active running. Let's do the command one more time. Up arrow, enter the authenticity of host that's the Kali Linux machine can be established. So it wants to verify, it wants us to verify whether we trust it. I'm gonna go with yes, yes trust it so it's been added and it says permission denied public key now the reason why it's denying me is because of the settings on the uh, change the configuration file to only accept the public key to log in i'm gonna have to change that i'm gonna change it to use a username and password and then we'll fix it to use just the public key so let's go ahead and uh Look at the configuration SSH config file. So that's going to be, let's look at this. Let's see, SSH, SSH config. Uh, let's search for password. So it says password authentication, no. So we need to change that one. And then, this is also saying that we need a public key for authentication. Uh, let's actually just enable the password authentication and see if that's going to fix it. I'm going to X out of that. I'm going to do sudo. Uh, let's do sudo vm etc. SSH, SSH, SSHD config. That's another typo. Let's change this to config. Let's enter here. Password authentication should be this to yes. Okay. Search for password. Now it says password authentication, yes. Let's try that command again from the PowerShell window here. Again, it says public key. So let's actually do this here. Let's restart. Start SSH and attempt this again. And it let us this time it, it, it did let us run the command. Now, what I want to do is I want to check if we have that directory. Let's do ls a and there it is. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cd to it, cd to this, and let's see if I did cut, authorized keys, and there it is, that's the public key. It was exported, if I go to 
Windows Explorer. If I open this public key, it should match that key. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, open. We'll look at the just the beginning of it. And as you can see here, it's got the AAA, B, 3N, Z, and so forth. So that's the key that was exported. Now that we have the key exported, what we are able to do is we can now run a command from the from PowerShell to use the keys to do the login instead of the password. So if I do, let me clear this. And you need to be in the same directory where you have your key. So the command we'll need to run here, so the command to use the keys will be sh dash i. This allows us to specify the key. Now in our case, we are using test ssh keys. And then Kali is the username. Uh, and then the IP 172.1.101. Uh, let's verify that that's the key name. Make sure we're not having a typo again. This is located at the remote server. On our client or Windows PC, we're, we're using the, the we are specifying the private key. That's why we're not putting the PUB at the end public. So it's test underscore SSH underscore keys. So that's what we're using. Let's see if we're able to connect. And sure enough, we're able to connect. And as you can see, it didn't ask us for the password. Do W, this is us right here. And if we looked at the logs, I wonder what the logs are gonna say. Let's do another tab. Let's do a journal CTL. So it says accepted public key for Kali from 172.16.1.10. So that's the IP for the Windows machine. The type of keys, RSA, new session 10. So as you can see, we are able to use SSH keys to log in. Now for this config file, there is another item. There is another line that we need to make sure that is uh, not commented. So there's three main lines that we care about when it comes to using keys you want to make sure that public key authentication is set to yes so here now uh, let's see uh, so this right here you can if you wanted to disable password authentication you can check this to no uh, the other thing you want to make sure that you have is this one this line right here if it's if it's commented out you want to remove the comment so if it has one of these here, you want to remove that because we want to use authorized keys. We want to make sure that we are using this right here. That's why the keys, that's why it's going to, SSH is going to look for the public key. And then we already saw that public key authentication is, you, you need to set this to yes in order to use the public key. So those are the three lines that you want to make sure that the configurations are correct. So that's all for this video. I hope this information has been useful. I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.